60, 70 years and never seen a fish kill like we're having. Let me say something real quick. This video was created by Andy Leverett, um, who is uh, an intern or was an intern with us and did um, this video. He's a college student at UNF. One thing too, if people are watching this, note that there's a number up there called the Fish Kill Hotline. We can give you that at our office. Please, if you see dead fish, it is so critical that you report them. Not just call Jimmy or I or send us an email. Make, take five more minutes, call the Fish Kill Hotline number, which I think will come up at the end of this, and report it. You, you know, you can leave a message, you, you know, it's really quick. And what we've had, Jimmy, is over three, there's the number. Or you can get it off our, our uh, blog, riverhugger.com. Uh, please, if you see fish kills, please report those. Uh, we've had over 300 reported fish kills. And frankly, Jimmy, I think that's a percentage of what's truly happening. Uh, there have been literally thousands of fish, and the vast majority of them are big redfish. We saw some tro what fishermen would call trophy reds yesterday, uh, right when we left the Ortega River on the west side of the river. We saw two redfish, I think, that would have tipped the scales over 20 pounds. And they were fresh, they still had their color. And as on our trip uh, upstream, we lost count. And most of them are big. Uh, fishermen tell me you know, they're concerned because that's the breeding population, what we're seeing is a lot of the big males and females who are the, the species that breed and reproduce. And so there's a lot of concern that this is going to be a long-term impact. Sadly, we saw, we lost count. We saw over 30 uh, dead uh, rays, stingrays, um, that were some, you know, two or three times a dinner plate uh, in all, on both sides of the river. Uh, we saw a lot of pogies, menhaden, saw a couple of flounders, some shad, and then we were in Six Mile Creek uh, and we saw some brim, which, you know, whatever, and let me make sure people understand, there's no real uh, cause and effect. The Florida Fish and Wildlife Commission is studying, uh, doing toxicology tests on the fish. There's a general sense, there's a relationship between these algae blooms and the fish. We're not able to sit here today and tell people. But what I can tell people, it's a sad thing to really yeah. see the wildlife. Well, and I want to I want to uh, apologize for any of you out there if, if we didn't give you enough fair warning with that video too, because frankly, it is quite disturbing to see right. those fish. But the reason we felt, you know, like necessary to create that video is because I think it's really, you read about this in the paper. Right. And it's hard to really, I think, visualize or understand the magnitude of the problem until you've actually seen it. And I think the best way, obviously, is through the video. And we actually, Andy Leverett, as I mentioned before, he won our 2010 college category of our PSA contest. Andy went out and did that video for us. Um, he was concerned as well. He's a lover of the river himself and said, I'll go out and capture some right. footage. And he put it together. He didn't, you know, it's not dramatized. It's, that's right, what, no, he, saw, that's no. what he encountered. Right. And it's a, it's, it is, it's a sad commentary on the river. I apologize again if it, if it does. I know some people that can be quite disturbing to see. It is for me, um, but I think it's something that we all need to be aware of that's happening right now. Our river is right. not healthy. It is sick. We're getting calls from people and emails from people saying they've never seen anything like this and they've lived Absolutely. here their whole life or right. fished on the river their whole life. And um, it, so I think it's, it's a sign that our river's telling us, our right. river's telling us something, our river's telling us she's sick and that we need to do something. Right. And um, as you mentioned, there is some indication that it could have a relationship right. to the algal, algal blooms. We're waiting to con right. That's not for confirmation. Confirmed. But I think the bottom line is what we do know is the river's not well, right. and we need to start doing something differently. Let's just, um, let's not, you know, we won't harp on this too long. I think right. it's clear. Yeah. You saw the photos. Right. Right. Yeah. You saw the, the algae blooms. People. I think what people want to know, though, and I think something that let's talk about now is what can we do as a community to address this problem? Because uh, obviously there's things that we can do. I know there's a lot of you out there, I'm sure, that are just sitting there right now ha having this uh, distressed about the help of the river, right. saying, well, I want to help and I want right. to do something. What can they do, Neil? Well, you know, there are good things happening. Um, 
you know, one of the things we noticed yesterday on the river is we still need to make the connection of what or how our yards are kept, what we, how we treat our yards, fertilize, et cetera. You know, there's a correlation between nitrogen running off of our yards into our waterways. And as we were traveling, Jimmy, we could not help but notice, you know, all the bright green yards along the river. And most of those yards, if anybody's been in the river, they all slope down. Uh, we're kind of re reminding people about our River Friendly Yards program, how you can have a nice yard without over fertilizing, you know, using river friendly plants and, and practices. Something we talked about, I think, several months ago was something uh, that we're part of. Uh, there were five organizations statewide who have been pushing for nitrogen. Uh, reduction programs to deal with the problem that we've seen here today. Uh, we, uh, it's got one of those acronyms, NNS, N Numeric Nutrient Standards. I think on people have seen our show previously. What that is is uh, standards addressing nitrogen and phosphorus, which are the cause of the blooms. We know that. We don't know about the cause of the fish kills. But we're pushing uh, with the EPA's help uh, for all of us to, to adhere to stronger regulations. In other words, let's get numeric standards that we can understand that are enforceable and begin to reduce the tons. I don't think people realize the volume of nitrogen. It's over, it's over 30, I think 33 million pounds of nitrogen go into the river every year. So, uh, so the average person out there You've talked about the nutrient standards. What, how can they help with that? I mean, is it just contacting your public, your elected well, officials? Well, uh, one thing, um, you know, one of the things that recently came up, uh, one of our local congressional delegations, Andrew Crenshaw, I, I think Congressman Crenshaw probably has been given some, what I would consider bad information, and uh, he had an idea of, you know, cutting the funding to stop this program, and if people are out there listening. Uh, you know, he represents a lot of this district. The 4th District is much of Jacksonville. Send uh, Congressman Crenshaw an email or call his office and say, look, I'm concerned about the health of the river. Please support these regulations. Let's let the process uh, work through. Let's see where we are at the end of it, rather than taking steps to kill the process before it even gets started. So that's something people can do. Uh, you know, as we move into the election uh, season and it's starting to heat up, what I've asked people to do in some neighborhood associations and CPACs and other groups, you know, when you have candidates come to your neighborhood or your business or your church, uh, ask them, say, look, I'm concerned about the health of the river. When you're thinking about your platform and you as the mayor or the new council people, you know, what, what is your ideas? I think it, this is going to be a critical time to link our voting support uh, with the health of the river. Well, I always like to say, Neil, you know, I encourage people to use their voice and their vote because right. it's so critical Absolutely. that we're an engaged citizens. Um, the river, right. as we mentioned earlier, we can't, our organization, you and I, we can't right. do it alone, regulatory agencies. It really takes citizens to be involved right. and engaged to let our elect, elect people that are going to protect the river and let our elected officials know that we care about protecting right. the river. And um, those are two great ways you can do it. I right. think also just sending any, whoever your elected official is, whether it be um, Congressman Crenshaw or someone else, just right. let them know that you support protecting the river and you support right. numeric nutrient standards. That's right. the, uh, this is a, right. a the, program, just say, that's all you have to tell them. Exactly. Is, I it support numeric nutrient standards and I support protecting the river. And so right. I think it's important that they know that there is public support for this. And we've seen the support just continues to grow right. for this project. And then uh, one thing I want to touch on too again is just in your own individual lives, just selecting the right kind of products, application yes. of those products such as fertilizer, um, that's critical that we think about the consequences of our actions and we do things like trying to use river-friendly yard practices or Florida yards and neighborhoods, right. um, using native plants. There's a lot of this information on our website that you can access, by the way, um, to learn about what is the right type of fertilizer, when mm -hmm. do I water, those type of things. Watering's a big problem, too. We right. overwater, and that contributes Absolutely. to stormwater Absolutely. runoff. Too much fertilizer, 